God. I forgot about what I'm supposed to preach about. <laughs> Sunday got me all messed up because God just messed up my. It's like you're going to preach something totally different. Um, I put um, the Spirit of the Lord, I don't know, I'm looking for it. So I know I did something. Yes, yeah, so I think. All right. Um, the Spirit of the Lord. That's what I was supposed to teach on Sunday. Yeah. But God shifted my message. Like I said, as soon as I came up, I was downstairs, I got nauseous. I got very nauseous in my belly. I was extremely nauseous. I don't know what was going on with me. And then all of a sudden, my son, um, Mr. Renee, picked it up. And he began to pray for me. I was like, Look, somebody else preach. Because I couldn't do it. And there was a dark, I freaking feel in here, there was a darkness. And I saw the Lord put an armor, a, a shiny armor on me with a sword. And then, next thing, I don't know what happened. He took over. He took over. Um, Isaiah 11, 2. We're going to go straight so I can give you the word. I'm trying to get over, done by um, 8.30. If I have to go over, probably be 10 minutes extra. But I'm aiming for 8.30 to be done. Is that all right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. Thank yeah. you for coming. Amen. Put your hand for this brother right here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hope we see you next Wednesday again. Yeah. Brother, God, God bless you, brother. Yeah. Um, 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 Mr. K have my 26 translation Bible. So... You can put King James up there, but I may, you know, she has another different Bible that she may go to some scripture. She was setting it up downstairs to make sure it's the right one ahead of time. Isaiah 11 and 2. Can you read that? And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now, the spirit, we go into the spirit, the spirit of the Lord should come upon him, to rest on him. So it's, it's talking like something outside coming on top of. Okay. There's a reason in the Bible, you know, now the Holy Spirit is inside of you. But when he comes to rest on you, he came for you to do something. Okay, goodbye. You're going to need the Spirit to come rest on you. You're going to see that every time he rested, there's something for you to do. Okay. Nobody here. It's one thing to have the Spirit on you. That's why in, uh, in the book of Acts, the Spirit come up and on for them to do something. Because they got filled with the Holy Spirit when Jesus breathed on them. Nobody here. Okay. Let, let's, let's put it this way. What's the purpose of a soda if it's inside the bottle? It got to come outside the bottle. Some of y'all, because you're jumping because you have the Holy Spirit in you, but until you get the Holy Spirit on you. Okay, nobody hear me. Haha, <laughs> glory, glory, glory. You got to get them on you. When he comes on you, he comes for a purpose and for a reason. Nobody hear me. For his way. Whatever direction. And I think that if you're singing, if you're dancing, if whatever you're doing for God, you need to ask him, put the spirit on me. That's when the power comes. That's when the glory of God comes. That's when, if you look at the prophets, right? And you're going to see here. When the prophets had to deal with kings, they, those kings could kill them. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, it gives you boldness. I ain't afraid of nobody. I'm not afraid of nobody. 
That's why Samson was able to kill a thousand uh, 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 um, Philistines with a jawbone of the jackass. He took the jawbone of the jackass because the spirit was in him. And can I take power? Come on now. That's what the Bible says in the book of Acts. That you should have power when the spirit come upon you. It isn't when the spirit fill you. When the spirit will come upon you. No, no, no. When you have the spirit upon you, you become a different man. Nobody hear me. Do you remember when Saul um, was trying to kill David? And he met with the sons of the prophets. And the, and the spirit put a barricade that every enemy that comes in, come on, they came to kill David, but anyone that came to kill David got filled. The spirit arrested them. What am I saying to you? It doesn't matter what the enemy does. God is going to arrest your enemies and deceive them by his spirit. It don't matter. It don't matter. God, God's spirit is going to arrest every enemy in the season. They're going to surround everything. Come on. In the season. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, the spirit of God is going to arrest, arrest every plan of the enemy. Now look at this. The one who comes upon, right? He's the one who always rests upon or comes upon. He's the one who anoints you with power for service. Yes. Amen. That's why Jesus told the disciple, wait upon, upon the Holy Spirit come upon you yeah. before you do anything. Yes. You don't need giftings. Uh -uh. You need the Spirit. Yes. Nobody hear yes. me. Yes. There, there's a lot of preaching, but it's not Spirit-inspired right. preaching. Yes. Yes, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you don't, you're not afraid of man, you're not afraid of beasts, you're not afraid of no devils. You're not afraid of no demons. You're not afraid of anything. You're going to do God's will. You're going to do God's purpose. Now, the Spirit of the Lord gives you boldness. If you're a chicken, you don't have the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord gives you boldness to deal with things that normally you will not deal with. The Spirit of the Lord gives you what? Boldness. Now, he's the reason Elijah can go after King Ahab. Yes. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, read 1 Kings 21, 20. First Kings 21, 20. And Ahab, and Ahab said to Elijah, has thou found me? Okay, let's go to um, 17. Look at 1 Kings 21, 17. This is what we taught about on Sunday about Jehu because the prophet spoke of prophecy about um, um, Jezebel that it was going to come out. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Read it. 21, 17. 1 Kings 21, 17. Then the word of the Lord. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. Uh huh. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord. In the place where dogs lick the blood of neighbors, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. Now, now, do you see that, right? It says exactly at that point we see prophecy being fulfilled. He said, when you kill neighbors, the dogs only lick your blood. And, and you have to understand, you have to have boldness. That's why the Spirit came upon him, to give him boldness to say those things. Because you have to understand, King Ahab was able to, to kill him. But he didn't allow that to stop him from speaking God's word. You can't let people's faces, that's why God told Ezekiel. Remember when he told Ezekiel? He said, don't worry about their faces. Say what I tell you. He said, I'm going to make your face like flint. 
Because why? The spirit of the Lord came upon him. So Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me, O my enemy? Let me tell you something. The minute you speak God's word, you become somebody's enemy. And he answered, I have found you because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. He said, Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I will take away your prosperity and, and will cut off from Ahab, Ahab every male in Israel, both white, bond, and free. And the, and the voice in the mouth of the prophet, there's life and death. That's right. That's right. He can close, he can open by the word of the Lord. Now look at this. When God called Moses and sent him to Pharaoh with the message, we find out why do you think Moses was able to do what he has to do? Because by what? By the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him to be. Now, I was reading that, right? That about leadership, that the first couple of acts was done by Aaron. Because God wanted him to model it. But the last acts for miracles was done by Moses. Because what it says to you, that God may call you, but he may cover somebody to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Until you can get it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. you, you understand that? Yeah. Because after a while, he let Aaron be the smoke, spokesperson. Mm -hmm. While the leader took a back seat. You, you understand that? So the first two, three miracles, Aaron was ahead. Mm -hmm. But the last one, we saw Moses now yeah. step up. Because why? The spirit of the Lord was upon him. Yes, now, when Joshua was about to take the reign of leadership from Moses, look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through 9. Jo Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. To nine. There shall not be any man be able to stand before Look thee. Nobody going to stand before you all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. Go on. All the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Let me tell you something. When you come into leadership, God give you a promise. What is the promise God tell you? I'm going to be with you. Right? And not only the promise says that I'm going to be with you, right? But he says, he says that no man should be able to stand before you. Meaning that nobody's going to win against you. You understand that? No, no one. If, if, if God be for you, who can be against you? He said no man should be able to stand before all, what? all the days. Not for a moment. Not for a second. But all the days of your life. All the days, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. And that is why, when you go to battle to, with true leadership, now let me get this right, not every leader is called by God. Amen. Not every leader is called by God. There are self-made leaders, that's leaders that's, uh, 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 that, you know, there are some who, you know, even Jesus said there's some that went, there's some that called. You understand that? Now, um, in this generation, we got to know who called you. Um, one of the things we have to talk about is pedigree. Right? Pedigree. If you're going to go into dog business, you can't buy a mutt and, 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 and breed them. You got to get the strain. You got to be full breed. In ministry, we got to find people who your daddy. Who breeds you. Where you come from. Now, when you look at uh, Elisha, his first job was to minister unto Elijah. Not to preach, not to do anything, but his job was to do what? Minister unto Elijah. Nothing else to do. Um, now, when it comes down to it, um, when we look at when the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, there's some benefits 
because he said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Why is it that? Because the, mm -hmm. he's seen God before Moses, so God will be with him when he's in trouble. Yeah. That's why pedigree, that's why fatherhood is so important. That's why who you submit to is very important. Like myself, I knew Bishop, like, I came under three ministries, Bishop McKinley, um, Apostle Davidson, Bishop Keaton, Greek fathers, and now Bishop Douglas. Yes, sir. Another great father. So you, you have to understand all these anointings, as God was with them, he's going to be with me. Amen. What I see him doing for my father, he's going to do with me. Amen. You have to understand, that's why it's important. He said, whatever he did for Moses, I'm going to do with you, Joshua. I was faithful to Moses, I'm going to be faithful to you. Now, faithfulness comes with, with loyalty and commitment. You ain't going to get it because you want it. Years of dedication, years of commitment, years of being there. That's how you get the favor of the Lord. He said what? Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you should divide an inheritance, the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be strong. God keeps saying it, right? And very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn to it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Now, look at this, right? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written there. Now, can somebody say focus? Focus. Okay. okay. Yes. The leader got to be what? Focus. focus. What you got to focus on? The word. Yes. You understand that? You, you have to focus on the word of God. You, you, do you understand that? You have to be, you got to have tunnel vision yeah. to get victory. You, 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 you can't get um, into every battle and every situation. You got to be focused. And, and, and this is one of the things God told me. He said, stay focused on me. Stay focused. Because I have an assignment. Yes. The assignment is, Joshua, you, you are supposed to divine the land of inheritance. Joshua is a man of war. But his assignment is to bring you your inheritance. So if he goes into battle, he can't give you your inheritance. Nobody hear me. If he goes into, he's a man of war, he's a, but he can't get into battle. He has to be focused so he can stay on his assignment. The enemy always trying to take you off your assignment. Know your assignment. Know your purpose. Now look at this. He said, have I not commanded you? Be strong, good courage, do not be afraid. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Let me tell you something. It is so powerful, right? He kept reminding him over and over, God is with you. Yes. God is with you. He said, wherever you go, God is with you. Whatever you do, God is with you. In the good time, God is with you. In the bad time, God. See, we think that God's not with you because you're going through something and you're dealing with a situation, but God is with you because of his promise. So guess what? If God is with you, God going to bring you out. Nobody did. Okay. Now, the Spirit of the Lord told Paul, Acts 18, right? Verse 9. When, when you look at it, when the Spirit of the Lord is on you, He tells you to do certain things. Can you witness something? Thank you. You got it? Go ahead. 18, verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul. And the Lord said to Paul, For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. What did He say? I'm, I am with thee. Okay. And no man shall set to set to hurt thee. You see that, right? So in, in, in the King New King James Version, he said, Now the Lord spake to Paul in the night by vision. Yes. Right? Do not be afraid. But speak and do not keep silent. Don't you see? 
Don't be afraid. Right? Uh, the enemy will try to shut your mouth every time. Yeah. But he said, do not be afraid and do not keep silent, for I'm with you. Don't worry what people will do against you. Amen. Look at this. He said, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in the city. Mm -hmm. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Now, when you look at it, God is with you. Yes. And he said, you speak. Amen. You say, you keep saying what I tell you. Amen. Now, the spirit of the Lord came upon a young prophet named Azariah, the son of Oded. Right? Second Chronicles 15. Second Chronicles 15, verse 1 to 2. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. See that, right? Jesus. Tell him boldness. Boldness. People need to hear truth. Yes, right. He said, if you're with him, he's going to be with you. If you forsake him, he's going to forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. This is not just telling people these days, you're going to get a house. You're going to get a car. You're going to get all these things. That's not what this is about. Because if you have God, you ain't going to be broke. Amen. If you have God, you're not going to be without. Amen. Come on. If you have God, you will not be. what Whatever the enemy tries, it, it won't happen. God is with you. Amen. Nobody understand. God is with you. If you have the true God, he said for a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without law. But when in their trouble, they turn to the Lord God of Israel and sought him. It sounds like people here. When you're in trouble, you want to turn to God. And you guess what? He was found by them. In those times, there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But a great turmoil was all in the inhabitants of the land. So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city. For God troubled them with what? Every adversity. Who troubled them? God. Okay, a lot of things we, time we think is the devil. Let me tell you something. A lot of time. Church people can never turn back. Because when adversity comes, we think it's people doing something to you, or we think it's the devil, but it's God allowing adversity to try to turn you around to repent. Things happen, you know, to, to, to let you think about certain things and say, okay, you know what, let me turn from this. He said, God caused the adversity, but we will not be changed to God because we said the devil and you pray. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was um, listening to this prophetess. I don't listen to too many people. I think I saw it, I sent it to you, right, Rebecca? That, that, that she was saying a lot of things I said a couple of times, true woman of God, because you know I don't listen. I, I, when I listen to people, I say, okay, I hear my daddy. Right? And she would stop praying for stuff. Stop praying for people. And, 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 and she, she said, begin to say, God, have your way. He said, the reason that God cannot change that man, you keep asking God to change him. Oh, God, change him. God, do this and God, do that. Change her. Change my kid. He said, they need to go into the street and learn obedience. Let them go because that's why I'm going to teach them. We try to save people or spiritually enable people. Some people need to be broken to come back. If, if they come back. If they make it. We, we need to stop praying and say, God, have your way. If it's a husband, if it's a wife, if it's a kid, if it's anybody, say, God, whatever you're doing, have your way. No, see, no, we don't want to say that. Because when you take... See, when you take your hands off and allow God to move, God may change your world. 
God may move things. Nobody hear me. God may move your plan and put his plan and do his will. You got to say, God, have your way in the season. Yeah. No, nobody hear me. I ain't going to have no headache over people. God, have your way. Yeah. You got to say, God, break them. Have your way. Yeah. Now, Isaiah and many of the prophets stood before kings and rulers because of the spirit of the Lord. 2 Timothy 1.7. Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. But of power. And of love. And love. And of a sound mind. Okay. Let's put it this way. God has given us the spirit of comfortation. <laughs> you see, we don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's true. Because you have a spirit of comfortation doesn't mean you don't have love. Right. See, it said that. That's see, true. a spirit of what? Power and what? See, don't mistake because you confronted that there's no love. Love balances the power. Okay, read it. Power and what? And a sound mind. Sound mind. You know what? It, it, emotional is. It is a mind with no emotional thing on it. It's I. I'm, I'm clear-minded. Knowing I'm focused. Don't mistake because you have to say something, you have to do something, that it's not love. We have to have the balanced message. Because if we don't have the balanced message, then the devil will do anything. Well, let's love the devil. Let's pet him. Hmm? Your child burned down the house. It's by my lollipop. Right. <laughs> Let's reward. What what is one of those twenty six virgins that's different? A Bible twenty six virgin. Which one is interesting in it? It says of power, love, and of sound judgment. See that right? Sound what? Sound judgment. One to inspire strength. One, love. One what? To inspire strength. Uh huh. Love and self discipline. And self discipline, meaning that you can be angry, but you're not losing it to the point that you losing control of what you're doing. Yeah. It says um, one to self restraint. Suffers exactly. They go Wise suffer strength. Discretion. You're not a boiling pot just throwing bubble all over the place. It's control. Yeah. Yeah. Simmer. Mm -hmm. What is it? God does not want us to be shy with his gifts, but bold and loving and sensible. See, bold, what? Loving and sensible. You see that, right? But if you look at some people, they will try to take away. They say because you love, you're not supposed to be bold. Yeah. Hmm? Do you know why God picked Paul? He was confrontational. Paul was passionate about killing Christians. <laughs> that was his life mission. They, they, they were like, he breathing threats. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill every which one of them up there. We're going to hurt them. And guess what? At least God can pick some people because they're not passionate about anything. No passion. God loved passionate people. At least he wanted to kill them because he thought he was doing God's will. Right. But he wasn't. That's for another day. But you got to be passionate. Amen. But you balance your passion with love, with a sound mind. You control it laser point. See, only with laser point can you do surgery. 
because it's precise. Mm -hmm. It knows what it's doing. It's cutting. Yeah. Now look at this. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are no longer ordinary. Mm -hmm. Right? If you have the Holy Spirit, you are no longer ordinary. Uh -huh. Right? Now let's look at the operation of the Spirit of the Lord. Ezekiel 1.28. Ezekiel 1.28. 1.28. Go on. As for the appearance of the bull that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. You see, you see that? It was like the likeness. It was like a, you ever seen a rainbow? Yes. That's mm -hmm. how the glory came. Mm -hmm. Right? So what he, did he do when he saw that? And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Go on. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Praise him. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak to thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto okay, me. the Spirit was on top, but it came into him. Wow. The Spirit came what? Into him. Go on. And when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet. So now the Holy Spirit now came on him and stood him up. Yeah. I remember... There's a certain point where the Holy Spirit take me over completely. Y'all don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, you think it's me, but it's not. There's a point where the Holy Spirit can em embody you completely. Yeah. Yeah. Voice change. Yeah. My voice changed, and that's why a lot of times I get fearful. I do not want to go to that level because I tell people, I have felt holy anger mm -hmm. where the Spirit come upon me where I just want to break everything apart. Because that's how much I feel. It's like when when you have a spirit of a warrior, and and you just want to tear the devil up. Um, but the spirit came upon him and stood him up. And then he said to to, to me, "What, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. I'm sending you to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation." They have rebelled against me. Uh huh. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. So we found out rebellious is a generational thing until you break it in you. Yeah. You got to break your, your rebellion so your children's rebellion can be broken. Yes, sir. Go on. Even unto this very day. Uh huh. For they are impudent children and stiff hearted. They stubborn children. I do send thee unto them. He said, I'm sending you to stubborn people. And thou shalt say oh, unto them. Your assignment can be stubborn people. Right. You don't choose your assignment. That's right. That's right. God told Ezekiel, I'm sending you to stubborn people. Yeah. Well, don't think they're only preaching too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Well, we just want to go to good people that we like. But your assignment can be stubborn people. People who rebel. He said, he, God knows they're rebellious. But God said, Ezekiel, that's your assignment. Ooh. I remember when I used to be teaching. There, there's certain classroom. You know, I don't know if you deal with that, Rebecca. That they have to change classroom seasonally sometimes. And some classroom you didn't want. Because you know them kids and that you pass by. <laughs> Crystal, you're laughing, right? You understand what I'm talking about? You see them kids up in there, you say, oh Lord, don't let when they cut. I don't want to go in there. But the very one you don't want to go into, that's the one God put you in. You understand that? To every rebellious people, there's a preacher. You don't pick your assignment. No. Nope. You don't choose which people you preach to. No. If you don't get this, 
then you're in trouble. Okay, nobody. All right. God said, for they are what? Impudent. <laughs> he said, hold up, your assignment is you're going to, they transgress, they're rebellious, and not only are they transgressors, they are impudent. Part of faith. No, no, but he says, not showing due respect for another person. Wow. Impertinent. Right? Now, now look at this. And not only are they impudent, they are stubborn. Could you imagine having that in your classroom and the paper that said you got the joint? Um, the, the, the children are impudent, stubborn, rebellious. That's your assignment for the next year. Hmm? Hmm? Okay. I say to myself, I don't know why anybody want to be a pastor. No. Now let's God call you. Yes. Because only when you call, you can be kept. Yes. Only when you call, you, you can be kept from dealing with people and people's issues and people's problems. Now look at this. He said, for they are imputed and stubborn children. I'm sending you to them, and you shall say to them, thus said the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious people. Don't look at you doing your assignment if they're listening or not. Okay, no Bible. Yeah. Don't look like you've been a good pastor if they are listening or don't listen. Right? He said, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. Nobody hear me. He said, you being who you are is not dependent on how they behave, right. but what I told you. Right. Yeah. It's dependent on you doing what I tell you. Don't look at the people as if you are being obedient or not, or you're successful or not. That is not the point. Because God already told you they wouldn't listen. Yeah. Okay, hold up, hold up. Before him. Now look at this, Rebecca. He told Moses, go talk to Pharaoh. And I was reading it in my time. But he said, when you go talk to him, he ain't going to listen. Hold up. Can God send you to a mission impossible knowing you're going to fail? God already told him, go on, but, but he going to fail. He ain't going to hear you. Not now. He said, I'm hard in their heart. But don't, did Moses take his stick and go home? No. Because his assignment was not on Pharaoh's reaction, but his obedience to go. All right, all right, nobody hear me. I can't look at y'all to evaluate what I'm doing for God or not doing for God if you listen or don't listen, if you have cause or don't have cause, or if you have this or don't have this. My evaluation is in my obedience to Amen. Amen. Stop looking. And that's why some of you are depressed. You're looking at your life and what you own to look at your relationship to God and those two don't mix. Because God can put you in a situation that's impossible that he already told you you're going to fail, but you're looking at your failure as you failing in God instead of you're looking at your marriage and saying, you know what, I have a hard life and my marriage is no good. That must mean I'm no good person. But that's your assignment of no good person. A rebellious person, that's your assignment. They won't listen. They won't do God's will. But God said, I put you there anyway. It's not about them. It's about you. Oh God. 
tell something? Yes, Lord, I hear you. God said you are successful in failure. Okay. Look at Marie, give me five right there. There you go. Amen. There you go. There you go. You can be successful in failure. Wow. Not because of what you're going through, but because of what he told you to do. Wow. Read the Bible. Wow. See, when I do my own study for me, because I don't study for you. Amen. I study for me. Amen. I study to look at my relationship with God and what He wants me to be. When I walk up in here every day and I'm preaching, that's my assignment. Right. My assignment in failure of success is not depend if you're doing right or wrong. Right. It's me doing what He told me to do. Yes. So if there's one person, I'm faithful in my assignment. If there's two people, I'm a faithful in my assignment because my assignment is to preach to you. Right. And God said, whether they hear or don't hear, whether they are rebellious or not, it don't matter. And he said, and you son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briar and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, wow. they bite you. Okay, what did that mean? See, I didn't understand that. But I'm understanding now. I'm understanding leadership. I was reading something um, by John Maxwell today, by Paul, the leader that lasts. Uh, it's called Paul, the leader that lasts. And one of the things he said, he gave 12 things. He said, the first thing you have to know as a pastor, you're going to be betrayed. If you don't get that, then you're in trouble. And then he said, you have to have people that pray for you. Yes. And that's what I'm going to have here. I'm going to have a couple of people that I trust who are going to pray for me. I'm going to put a prayer team in prayer for me. Amen. Not for the church. Amen. Amen. For me. Yes. Your job is to pray for me 24 hours a day. Oh, that's good. A prayer, a prayer team for me. Because why is it a prayer team for me? Because the enemy knows that he don't need to attack you. I just need to attack him. If I attack him, should we scatter? That's why I need people. And I, and, I, and I learned this, right? Mom, My mom sent me this. And it was about the three people that comes into life, into your life or into a ministry. And it talks about um, you have a confident Constituents and somebody, I guess, betrayer, so I don't know. <laughs> but the confident, he said, you have to understand who's your confident. Mm -hmm. Not everybody who comes to church is your confident because you can, don't mistake a constituent as a confident. Yeah. Yeah. Constituents are people who come either for to get their own thing yeah. or they come to build. They are, and he said, I look at them as scaffolding for a building. Mm -hmm. They hold the building up, but when the building is finished, they pull off and move on. Yeah. And you've got to deal with that. Jesus. And then he said, you have to learn how to deal with people leaving you. And that, that's good um, uh, uh, business-wise, um, church, relationship. And he says, some of your problem is you fell in love with the temp. Fell in love with the temp. They're from the temp agency. You hear falling in love. You fall in love with temporary people, seasonal people. Nobody hear me? Okay, no problem. Marry, you married the temp. They're supposed to be temps. They, they come, they go. Nobody is seasonal. they seasonal. Now, he said, don't mistake your you're confident for your constituents because he said the confidence are not here for the vision. Hmm? The, 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 the confidence are not here for the vision. They are here for you. Okay. They're here because of you. You are the reason why they're here. For you. So if you take away you from them, they'll leave. Because their assignment is only you. 
The confidence of the only one you can let your head down with yeah. and be who you are. Everybody should got to be tight. Because yeah. right. I don't know you. <laughs> you, you know, you may be constituents. My thing is that you fell in love with the temps and you begin to tell your temps your secret and that's why you hurt. That's why you're broken because you have not identified. The Bible says, know them that labors among you. Um, uh, 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 know the constituents, know, know the confidence, and know everything else that comes along with you because if you don't identify these people that comes around in your life, then you may tell the constituents every secret, and then when you tell the constituents your secret, they, when they leave, they use that yeah, secret. Yes, yes, yes. They tell everything you ever said, everything you ever did. They tell all your numbers, your bank checking number. Sir. All your personal information. They won't keep no secret. Because the minute they leave, the water's running. <laughs> but look like <laughs> he said I'll put you among scorpions right he said I'll put you among scorpions you see you don't think God will put you among scorpions scorpion will kill you and not only that he put you among briars and thorns thorns hurt your hands oh I'm talking some I, I know this is God talking because you don't think God will put you in some situation when the spirit of the Lord comes he may put you in an assignment that you may not want or chose, but it's still God in it. There's there's something that's going to cut you, it's going to hurt you. The bride and the thorns going to hurt you, but it's still God. But look what he said. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of they, of, 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 of um, be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. He said, you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. The, see, the thing is, you think it's about the people, but God is checking you. Do not be, he said, you don't be, see, somebody else rebellion can show your rebelliousness. Wow. Wow. Amen. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's right. Can be mirrored in you. Yes. You may think, oh, I got it together, but God said, hold up, have you done what I told you to do? Okay. They, they, they treat you bad, but are you going to treat them good? You, you say they're being tested, but I'm testing you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You being tested. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, don't be rebellious like, like that rebels house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now, he said, when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me. And behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me. There was writing on the inside, on the outside, written on it, where lamentation and mourning and what? And woe. Morning and what? Not every word God gives you is going to be good. Okay, Ezekiel 3, verse 12. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Go on. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another. And the noise of the wheels over against them. Uh -huh. And the noise of a great rushing. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Well, can you be bitter and angry and still be anointed? In a, he, was, he, was, he was bitter and he was angry. That's what the heat of the spirit is. Wow. Wow. But the spirit was strong on us. He's angry, he's upset, but he anointed. Bitter and angry and anointed. Because you can be angry and so much have the passion of what God wants you to do. And you're angry and you're bitter concerning the certain things that you see. Yeah. But he was still anointed. He said the spirit of the Lord was strong upon him. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Now, a similar thing happened in Acts, right? Um, 39, 40. 
Let's go real quick. My time's coming. I have 20 more minutes. I'm going 10 minutes beyond this. My regular 10, 30, 10 minutes more. I already called it. I may finish faster, but I'm calling it by hand. Go on. Acts chapter 8, verse 39, 40. Amen. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So talking about the Spirit was the first flight in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Now, it was a, when you talk about the Spirit, the Spirit came, took him, hide him, put him, and took him. Wow. <laughs> and he transcend time. Yes. Wow. No, somebody came and took him. Yeah. Took him. Come on, the Spirit took took, I believe, Moses to the Mount of Transfiguration, and that's where Peter and them, okay, when he said, come to the cleft of the rock, yes. Yes. he took them and brought them to Jesus' time. Oh, yeah, that Elijah got transfigured, brought them to Jesus' time, wow. when he, the Spirit took them and transcend time and brought them into this. So time, oh, well. Wow. Wow. Time, yeah. Time, wow. time, time. Don't say it. Don't say it to the religious <laughs> people. <laughs> so the Spirit took him, brought him into time, and brought him to the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses, where Jesus saw him. That's why Peter, don't tell me they had a vision, because he said, you want me to build a tent for Moses and Elijah and you. So they was real people that he took translated in time and brought them here. So the spirit took Philip and traveled with him. So it was not a spirit we don't have. No, the Holy Spirit is a person. Someone is not somebody and came up, grabbed them, traveled with them. That's about the spirit. That's the God I serve. The spirit of the Lord empowers you. And that's what you're missing. The spirit of the Lord empowers you. Do you know why the devil is able to move in and out? Elisha, the king was doing. There sometimes I'm sitting, God tells me everything. Y'all don't know. He tells me what's going on. Elisha was right there. The king, I believe one of the kings who was forming things, Elijah heard every conversation. He said, where's a spy in the camp? But it was the Holy Ghost telling yes. Elijah every little thing in the secret chamber. A lot of times I hear voices. I hear people talking. I said, God, what is this? And sometimes I'm telling him, no joke. I sit down, he talks with me like a friend. He tells me what's going on. What's not going on? Who's who? Who's not who? He tells me everything. He shows it to me. You don't know what you're missing. Okay. Okay. Now, the Spirit of the Lord empowers you. Go to Luke chapter 4. Eighteen, nineteen. Praise him. Amen. And the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Well, he didn't say the spirit of the Lord is in you. No. Upon he said the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Yeah. Because why? To preach the gospel to the poor. So you see that em empowerment comes before preaching. Mm -hmm. The Spirit came to assign him to do an act. Could it be why you don't have passion 
You have not been uh, uh, anointed for where you are. You've been positioned by me, but you have not been anointed for your position. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you don't have passion in, that's not what you've been anointed for. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to switch. Yes. Nobody here. Yes. Don't be on a board because you like me or I misplace you. One of the things I found out, you got to put people where they need to be in their place. Yeah. And one of the mistakes I made, and I can say I make mistakes, I put people in a place because I needed to get something done. Mm. Yes. yes. Yeah, you can do that. Because you can put the cook to wash dishes, but he's a cook. So he's breaking every dishes because he's not anointed to wash dishes. He's anointed to cook. <laughs> How many people understand you place the wrong people in your life? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, I'm going to leave it alone. You, you put the wrong people in, you, you place the wrong people because you didn't know what they're supposed to do. So when they jack up your life, you say, what is wrong? It must be the devil. No, you have put people in places where you're not supposed to. They were supposed to be your friend, not your lover. Come on now. Nobody. They weren't supposed to be nothing else for you. Can I tell you something? When something is anointed for you, there's growth in it. You become better. If you're in friendships, if you're in relationship, you're not growing. That's where you're not, that's not the place where you're anointed at. Okay, why? The anointing breaks the yokes and removes the burdens. If that person's not breaking yokes and removing burdens, they're not anointed for you. If you're singing, no yoke is being destroyed, burning removal, and you put it on burden and put it on yokes. Put it on. You have an anti-choke anointing. <laughs> you put it on burdens. And you put it on yokes. Something wrong. See, okay, let's put it this way. Everybody has problems in relationship, but you shouldn't have problems all the time. So don't, don't buy the point of you're supposed to be happy all the time. Nobody happy all the time. Because you know what? Let me tell you the scriptures. Say, in this life, you're going to have trouble. You, you understand? In this life, you're going to have trouble. But he said, if you believe in God, believe in me. Or oh, nobody here. Don't, don't be full to the fact that you're not going to have trouble. But if you do have trouble, there's an anointing that breaks the yoke and removes the burden. Even in the best of relationships. You're going to have some hard times. Nobody here. I'm not anointed all the time. Fine. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Nobody hear me. Woo, glory. I could be quite a handful. You've got to be anointed for me. Because I get very quiet. I don't like to talk at home. I talk here, but at home, sometimes I don't like to talk. Because I talk all the time. Right. Sometimes I like to just sit and look at the the window, go sit in the balcony, put my chair where nobody can see me. I can see you going. <laughs> I could throw balloons and hide. You don't know where I'm at. <laughs> the water, right? Hmm? Yeah. Or go sit in the back, get some air, barbecue a little bit. You know? How many people, is everybody here anointed all the time? No. Okay. Because I thought it was only me. That's why your mate always say, man of God. 
<laughs> to remind you, pastor? Yeah. Huh? Who that? <laughs> I don't know him on this head. Who that? Okay, leave it alone. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for a great act. To preach to the poor. So you got to know that you have to place yourself in the right place. Yes. You have to put yourself in the right position. And that goes for leaders. What does it have to do with the Spirit of the Lord is upon me? If He's not on you for that thing, then you're in the wrong place. And I think that's what we have. Um, some people in here, you know, you do things because you love me. It's good to love me, though. It's very good. I don't mind the love. Have enough haters, but. But don't do it because you love me. Do it because you've been anointed to be positioned there. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how you know you you are anointed for the position? It's easy. Yeah. It's not burdensome. You enjoy it. You enjoy. You you come early to do it. Nobody have to force you. Look, this is not throwing rocks. But if we got to wake you up for prayer, you're not anointed for that. Because if you've been anointed for prayer, you go to bed early so you can wake up. Because I go to bed early regardless of what, so I can get up at 4 or 5 to pray. How many people know that not to call my house after, after 8? Because I'm in bed. 7.30, I'm, I have my pajamas on. I'm an island boy. Huh? 7.30, I have my pajamas on. I'm ready to go to bed. I have my tea, crackers, island boy. Thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to settle for the night because by the time, but the thing is I go to sleep early, but I wake up early. Because the Bible said early in the morning, not 9 o'clock a.m. when I seek him. That's not early. In the Hebrew, that's the first watch. <laughs> you late. The devil already had a plan before a minute he at your house. He eating chips waiting for you. <laughs> he at your front door, got the kids, the husband. You got to get up early in the morning to see them. So wait, now, 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 the last part is get some power. 1 Corinthians 4, 20. Now there's something wrong when we preach power and there's no manifestation. Yeah. We can't leave the Holy Spirit out of the church. We need his power. Hmm? We need his leading. We need his guidance, especially in these days. First, first Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. For the kingdom of God is... <laughs> For the kingdom of God is not in word, but with what? But in power. But in what? But in power. Manifestation. It's not only a word. When we preach a word, and this is for all the people who are listening, right? When, when, you, when the, there's a word, expect God to do it when you hear it. If I'm preaching about healing, get your faith up to be healed. You understand? If I'm preaching about finances, get your faith up and get some money. And start. <laughs> that's what you do. That's how you tap into it. If I'm talking about love, then start loving. There's manifestation. God will give you some grace concerning that word. So when there's a word, there's a manifestation of it or, or like the operation of it. Okay, if I put a pipe eye here, you know, put a fa faucet, what are you expecting? So you hearing the word, it's not just clapping and say, I receive it. But say, God, I expected that, that thing to come to life in my life. Yes. 
tap into it. I'm, I'm looking for my dictionaries. Who I passed the preach. Can I tell the testimony? Yes. Is it okay? Okay. I said many things. I'm a preacher about it. And I said that God never told Moses to get gold. But God told the uh, Moses told the children of Israel where to go get the gold. That's right. Right? Well, I, I know I said a couple of things, and God is doing a couple of things in here. Um, Deaconess Jazzy went yesterday, right? She went to uh, a car dealership. Oh, right now. And the guy put her on a car with no money. Amen. Yeah. Something, can I say something? It's nice you're clapping, but it'd be even nicer if you start going to car dealerships. Hold up. See, you saying that money, but she went there with no money down payment, and then she got the right plan how to pay. Come on, mom. That's God. These, you don't walk anywhere without money unless there's some grace with you. And get a car. Who gonna give you a car? See, somebody who needs something new, or you don't have one, you need something, you say you don't have no money. It's not money you need. You need favor. Do you know that I may be in need of something? Let me tell you something. Don't ever look at the preacher and look at his, at his condition and think that when he says something, it's not for you. Moses didn't have no money to build the, te you know, the temple in the wilderness. God didn't give him no money like that. He was a shepherd. When he came into the job, he told the people where to go. He didn't have no goal. When he was ready to build it, he told them, bring it. Bring a, bring a free will offering. Moses didn't have no money. People did. Amen. I'm going to start prophesying to all people. I'm telling you, I don't care what nobody's thinking here. I'm going to another level. Amen. And what I'm going to say, don't, don't look at me and say that, oh, what I say, what, no. What I have in for me is for you. Right. And guess what happened? When I begin to speak it for you, you bring it to me. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, nobody, let somebody do it. Let somebody do it. When I begin to speak it to you, you're going to make sure I'm good. I'll speak it, but when you demonstrate it, when you act on it, you're going to see it begin to happen because you act on the word of the prophet. It said, believe in the Lord your God and believe in his prophet, so should you prosper. We going to another level. We going to another, and I'm not asking for permission. I'm not doing none of those things. We going there. We going there because why? I'm going to model to you what the next level is. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians two four. I'm done. Yeah, two four. Come on, somebody needs to get it. Somebody needs to get it. Michaela, you got it. You got it? You got it? Say, yeah! <laughs> First Corinthians 2 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. Hold up. It said, in my speech, right? Well, I, I, I'm going to read one. And brethren, when I came to you, did not, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom declaring to you with testament. God did not impress you. You know how to put words together. Right? He's not impressed with all that stuff. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness. Look at this. Look at this. You know what weakness means? It's what I just told you. He didn't have nothing. That's what weakness said. I was with you what? In weakness. Nobody get it. Mm -hmm. wow. He said, I came to you. 
in the Amplified, I came to in a state of weakness and fear and great trembling. I didn't have anything. I, I was broke. I was sick. I was down. Right? And he said, when, I, when I'm reading from the message, uh, um, from the Amplified, he said, my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating. You see that, right? The Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them. Mm. Right? So that your faith will not rest on the wisdom and rhetoric of men, but in the power. So when I'm preaching, and if I'm preaching about healing, it's persuading your mind to be healed. Yes. Yes. It's persuading you to go out there and go get what you want. And that's, so now, when somebody's preaching, there's a demonstration that's supposed to leave with you. And that's supposed to be manifested in this place. So when you come in here, I've been talking about the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. You need to say the Spirit of the Lord is upon you too. Amen. And begin to demonstrate the power of the Spirit in your life. And God to guide you and God to direct you. Amen. But, but like I said at the beginning, what's the point of you saying I have the Spirit but it didn't come upon you for something? Right. Right. Hmm? What are you supposed to be doing? Maybe when the Spirit come upon you, you're going to know what you're supposed to be doing. Wow. Do you remember what the Bible used to say? The burden of the Lord came upon me. Right. What is the burden of the Lord? The Spirit of the Lord. I always told people, you know when I know when it's time for me to do something? It's a push. It's a push, yeah. It's like diarrhea. I, I know. That's yes, something I can it. explain. <laughs> You can't, you can't prepare for can't it. Hold it. You can't hold it. You gotta go. <laughs> Sorry. But that's the only way I can explain it. When the Spirit is upon you, it's an urging. It's a, it's a boldness. It's a faith that comes with it. When you don't have faith for something, that means it's not for you. And He may not want you to do it at this time. It's you who wants to do it, but it's not Him who wants you to do it. When the Spirit comes upon you, you're not asking people, are you right or you wrong? You just know that it's time. It's time to move. It's time to get that next place. It's time to go to the next level. It's time to go to the next place that God had for you. You just know. Amen. Hmm? And I think there's a knowing in your spirit first. Yeah. And then you know that in the natural, God begins to move upon you to do what he has to do. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord come upon you. Amen. Amen. Thank God, for the, brother, for you coming today. Yeah.